right? So our third poem is A World, World Blast from Behind the Hill by William Woodsworth. And um, basically it's talking about a storm. Um, the first line is the same as the title. Um, so there's a storm that comes from over the hill and it says rush o'er the wood with startling sound. So it came quickly over the woods. So you know they're in a forest, maybe like a mountainy region. Yeah, it was trees. overbearing, like it came quickly, it rushed over the wood. But then in the next line it says, then all at once the air was still. Meaning it was just crazy wildness, but then it was just serene peacefulness. And then you almost get the sense that that's kind of like a hurricane, like the eye of a hurricane. Um, but then it also says, and showers of hailstones pattered round. Um, so it's still hailing, but there's, it's very still, um, which is kind of like a contradiction. Um, and you know this is in the past, like he's looking back on it because um, it used like rushed is pa past tense and pattered is past tense. So he's telling the story almost. Yeah, he's telling about something that already happened yeah. to him. Um, says, where leafless oaks towered high above, I sat within an undergrove. So all the leaves have been stripped off the oak, but he finds an undergrove. It says, of tallest hollies, tall and green. So the hollies is like a symbol of like shelter. And um, he, he, that's where he finds his little... His shelter. Yeah. In the next um, line, he says, "A fairer bower, meaning shelter, was never seen, meaning it was a great shelter for this type of storm." And he says, "From near to year, the spacious floor with withered leaves is covered o'er." Um, so, basically, meaning like the leaves fall every year, um, and the floor is very like nice. So you get the sense that it's like flat because of all the leaves. A nice place to sit. I think crunchy leaves would be kind of soft rather than the hard ground. Um, and But then it says, and all year the burr is green. So then where did the leaves come from if the leaves are always green? So maybe they're, they died at one point in time. There was death in the tree, but now it's always alive. You get the sense that the storm brings life to the tree. And, and then, then there's like, um, like a um, tone shift here. Uh, it goes from that all year the bower's green, but then it says, But see, wherever the hailstones drop, the withered leaves all skip and hop. Almost like a cheerfulness towards yeah. it from being like so gloomy, saying the um, leaves are so withered, but then it's almost like giving life to the withered yeah. leaves after the hailstones drop. Yeah, he, he personifies the leaves with skip and hop, which are very positive words. Like, you get a definitely positive mood going from there and then he uses the interjection but C with an exclamation point he's very excited about this um, and then he says there's not a breeze no breath of air which means that it's still still but there's still hailstones making the leaves hop so the hailstones bring life to the leaves so you, that's reinforcing the idea that the storm brings life to the tree and it says yet here and there and everywhere along the floor beneath the shade by those embowering hollies made, the leaves and myriads jump in spring. So there's leaves everywhere jumping, filled with life. So the storm has just brought everything to life. Um, and the leaves are of abundance. Um, and, and then you have an allusion to Puck from A Midsummer Night's Dream. It says, as if with pipes and music rare, some Robin Goodfellow were there. A Robin Goodfellow, that's what Puck was called in Midsummer Summer Night's Dream. And he had a pipe that he played that brought the nature to life. So it's almost like the storm is Puck's presence coming and bringing life back to everything. Yeah, it's at first, the the first part of the poem, it gives you all this like almost destruction where the world blast comes in and you feel like it's gonna destroy everything. But then in the tone shift with the hail drops, everything just like comes to life. And like there's so much life in this part of the poem all the the tone of it just like makes you feel happy the it says like the leaves in myriads jump in spring as with pipes and music rare it's almost like a celebration like a festival going on after this just storm so it yeah. gave life to the whole like area they were in 
and then the last lines it says, and all those leaves in festive glee were dancing to the menstrual sea. And a menstrual sea, however you pronounce that, is a comedic skit. It was American invention. Actually, it portrays colored people um, in a comedic way, but it um, brings life to it. Like it's saying that it's very funny, very lighthearted, and festively, like they're partying. It's clearly like a liveliness to it, and it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. And also, um, there was a ch tense change um, in the line, the withered leaves all skip and hop. Um, skip and hop, that's present tense. So you get the feel that there's, it's still going on. He's not just talking about the past, but there's, the storm is still bringing life to the leaves. Yeah, that after that it says there's not a breeze, no breath of air. He, he doesn't say like there wasn't a breeze. It's like he was almost there at that point where there's no air, but there's all this light going around. So the, it's saying like the hail just like gave all this life to this like wooded area and even goes down to, uh, in a festive glee where it's like a personification of the dead leaves having life. Yep. And they're happy. And that is a world blast from behind the hill.